Hello, welcome to the Varroa Monitoring Senior Project of the Class of 2020. Here is the Grand Valley team that worked on this project. Hannah, the team captain, Natalia, the point of contact, Seth, the secretary, Kyle, and Connor. This project was sponsored by the Bee Informed Partnership, whose mission is to improve bee colony health, support beekeepers, and bridge that gap between science and industry. And they're the largest U.S repository of colonies and health data in the United States. In the current process, a field specialist will collect approximately 300 bees from a hive and put them into a mason jar. Isopropyl alcohol is then added to the mason jar and the field specialist shakes the jar for about one minute. Once the shaking is complete, the bees will be poured onto a mesh. Once they're on the mesh, both the varroa mites and the alcohol will fall through the mesh, but the bees will stay on the top surface. To ensure that all of the varroa get rinsed out of the bees and through the mesh, the field specialists will typically rinse the alcohol back through the mesh for about two to three times. Once this process is completed, the field specialist will count the number of mites in either the mesh or the white tub that they are being drained into. Once they get a count of the number of mites, they will discard both the bees and the mites. The problem with this current process is that it is very time consuming. If a field specialist has many hives to work through, like what is shown in the image on this slide, it will take them a very long time to sample each hive. If the process of shaking the bees is automated, the field specialist will have more time to complete more specialized tasks instead of shaking the bees. In addition, since the number of bees that they place into the jar is only an estimate, the percent of the varroa mite infestation is also only an estimate. This means that although they can get a fairly accurate reading from the current process, it is not entirely accurate and there could be some sources of error. The purpose of this project was to create a device that automated the alcohol washing process to remove the varroa mites from the honeybees. This is done so field specialists can spend more time in the field doing diagnostic services instead of taking time to shake the jars. Additionally, a method for counting the number of bees in the sample was explored to increase the accuracy of the data taken in the field. The shaking device must be at most 24 by 60 by 25 inches. This will ensure that the device will be able to be placed on the top of the hives and will be able to fit in the back of the field specialist trucks. The mite removal jar must hold a minimum of 500 milliliters. This volume includes both the bee and mite combination and the isopropyl alcohol. The shaking device must be at most 30 pounds. This will allow for the easy transportation between hives in the field. The shaking device must also be powered from the field. For our design, this will be done by utilizing a rechargeable battery. The shaking device must also incorporate a start-stop switch. The shaking device must be resistant to contact with the isopropyl alcohol in order to effectively remove the varroa mites from the bees. The setup time for the shaking device must be less than 10 minutes, and the process time for this device must be less than 4 minutes. The process time consists of when the mites and bees have been collected into the jar to when the mites and bees have been removed from the jar. Waterproof, temperature resistance, and durability were three specifications that were affected by COVID-19. The waterproof specification was altered to say that the shaking device must be able to function in light rain without incurring any damages. This is important since the device will be used outdoors in varying weather conditions. Temperature resistance and durability were made less restrictive 
since the shaking device is now being manufactured from a 3D printer, which means it's made from plastic rather than metal machine components. Our solution has three parts, the mite removal jar, an orbital shaker, and software for counting the bees. The mite removal jar has three parts, the bee mesh, the mite mesh, and the alcohol reservoir. This jar is placed on top of the orbital shaker, which is rotated in a swooshing motion that gets the alcohol in through the bees and helps dislodge the mites. Software was developed to count the bees after the mites were removed. The mite removal jar has three parts. The jar itself, a finer mesh, and a coarser mesh. The fine mesh is to catch the mites and the coarse mesh is to catch the bees and separate them from the mites. And the alcohol will be residual in the bottom of the jar. The mite infested bees are placed into the bee mesh, which is then placed into the jar and alcohol is poured in. Then the lid is securely fastened and the jar is placed on the shaking apparatus. Once the shaker is done shaking, the lid is removed. The bee mesh with the bees are removed from the jar and poured out onto a tray. The mite mesh is then removed and the mites can be visually counted by the field specialists and discarded. And the alcohol remains in the jar to be reused. The shaker is designed to swash the bees and the alcohol around in order to dislodge the mites from the bees. The top platform moves in a circular path and the speed is controlled by a potentiometer. Inside the box, the shaker is powered by a rechargeable battery. Software for Counting Bees is a program written using machine learning techniques to detect the number of bees present in a photo. This will allow for better accuracy in the Varroa mite infestation level data taken from the field. The data taken from the field currently is less accurate than it could be because the number of bees collected for a sample is estimated to be about 300, where it's not a known number. The original plan for increasing the accuracy of the data in the field was to develop a bee counting apparatus, which would be a black box with controlled light on the inside and a camera controlled by a Raspberry Pi. After much deliberation, it was determined that it would be more productive to create a software to take an image from a phone or other handheld device and upload the image to a cloud, which would then count the bees. Images of components for the mite removal jar and orbital shaker are shown on this slide. From left to right, the components are a 3D printed bee mesh, a prototype for the base of the orbital shaker, the 3D printer printing components for the orbital shaker, and lastly, the final box for the orbital shaker. Here's the final product. As you can see, the circular motion of the shaker creates turbulence inside the jar that helps dislodge the mites from the bees. Challenges that were faced during this project due to COVID-19 include virtual team meetings, no access to Grand Valley's machine shops, which led to a redesign utilizing a 3D printer, which then led to further roadblocks, including failed centers on the printer. We would like to thank the BN Forum Partnership for sponsoring this project, as well as Grand Valley's Office of Sustainability for funding. If you'd like to support the BN Forum Partnership, please see the link.